So let's suppose now we are going to say something about expressive pro power of ex proposition logic. We have defined syntax, we have defined semantics, and we want to know that using these two ideas, now what we can build, what kind of objects we can represent using formulas in proposition logic. The objects are the Boolean function. Boolean function is a takes n variables as input and produces an output. So if your formula has n variable in appearing, then you can say that it may it represents some Boolean function. Okay. So let's suppose your function formula is f and it has variables p1 to pn, and we can say that it, it represents a function f as follows. Okay, so you take a function f and uh, it give it an inputs which are basically m of model m of p1 and m of pn and it assign it the value which is m of f and if, so, if such a fu function can always be constructed then you can say that this formula capital F represents this function small f. So for example you can say that you have a p1 or p2 a formula it has two variables so you can say that it represents this function small f if you can write it down as follows that if you give it 0 0 it produces 0 0 1 it produces 1 and so on and this is somehow a truth table because truth table also you write basically uh, rows and the corresponding values so in, in boolean functions in other words are truth tables expressive power. So what do we mean by expressive power? This theorem is essentially the statement of expressive power. For each finite Boolean function f or each truth table there is a formula f that represents f. Let's see how can we do that. So let's choose some function uh, f is a boolean function which takes n variable as input and produces one bit as an output and we now we are not going to construct formula capital f okay? and that will represent function so let's see how can we do that so let me introduce some notation okay so i will say pi superscript 0 if it represents not of pi and pi superscript 1 is pi the variable itself okay now let me construct the formula so for every vector, okay, for every vector, uh, which is basically every row of uh, your truth table, what you do, you construct a conjunction. Basically, what you do, you basically say that uh, if you have a one, one, zero, then you say basically uh, p one, p two, and not of p three. Okay, this kind of conjunction you can construct. Okay collect all these conjuncts okay so for if i give you a vector of bits then you can construct this formula and the point is this formula is exactly true whenever these bits are given and if for any other input this is false now what you can do you can put them together and take a conjunct disjunction of all the values bit vectors and what we have done, if the function had returned not returning 1, then we had been returning false. Okay, so now this is a formula in our proposition logic. And you can easily check this formula f becomes satisfied by a model if and only if that model, if you put in the function f, returns 1. It's not very difficult to see. Now we see the symbols like conjunction, disjunction, and negation. I managed to represent all truth statements, and therefore uh, I have a full expressive power of representing Boolean functions. If we do not have sufficiently many logical connectives. We maybe fail to represent all Boolean functions. I mean, we, we use at least three symbols, and if you drop any one of them, maybe we are not able to represent them. So, how do we know we only use all three of them? Maybe just two of them is sufficient. Okay. So, first we can see how we can prove something is insufficient. Let's say we have a one simple conjunction and 
an end alone cannot express all Boolean functions. So how do you prove it? So to prove this, we show that Boolean function for 0 it returns 1 and for 1 it also returns 1 cannot be achieved by any combination of conjuncts. How do we prove it? We set up induction over the size of the function consisting a variable p and conjunction since the old f only has single argument therefore you cannot have a two variables in this function. So only choice is p in the base case I mean there is no true symbol no false symbols so only one atomic variable formula is p and you can see that the p for 0 its function does not match okay. So well you cannot represent with single variable so let's try to inductively go on let's suppose f and g of the size less than minus 1 do not represent f okay for some uh, value of p it does not really produce 1 okay we construct a longer formula in the following way we just pick conjunction of three two formulas now we just pick the value for which f either f or g was not 1 and just take a conjunction okay and you can always pick that therefore you cannot represent the function f by f and g and therefore there is no way you can represent all tables using only conjunction and variables. So similarly you can think about what are the minimum logical connectors. So there will be landscape when sometimes you can do it sometimes you cannot do it. And uh, so so minimal set we can show that that the conjunction and not or disjunction and uh, not can actually represent the whole proposition loss. You can see that I can define truth using p or not p. Uh, I can define false using true. I can define conjunction using disjunction and this is remember that this is we, we saw at the table which proves that and uh, we had XOR which we can define in terms of conjunction, disjunction and negation. We can have implication defined in terms of disjunction and negation and similarly equals. 